Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Grand Rapids, Hello. Michigan. So happy to be here and so sad that I had to turn off my Marae quicksand to talk to y'all because I would really want to be blasting some merengue or something driving through here. But y'all got me talking. This is the Spanish side of town. Um, the city's 16% Hispanic and it has a little strip that has mostly Hispanic businesses. Uh, the city, uh, I'm really thrilled to be here. La Patrona! Very happy to be here in Michigan. I'm excited to finally see this town. This town has diversity. Um, a lot more than a lot of towns in the Midwest do. So, um, you know, it's one of those places where you do have, even though it's not that big of a metropolitan area, it's like about a million people, actually. So it is about a million people in the metropolitan area, but the town itself only has like 200,000 people. So a town this big with so much diversity, it feels exciting to be here. I love to see there's a Salvadoran restaurant right there. Um, Coney Island. The food in Michigan is incredible. That's one thing. I've liked Michigan a lot. I think out of all, not because Katie's from here or anything, but out of all the states we've been through, I've liked Michigan the most. Um, and it's not a perfect place, but I mean, the weather's brutal and um, the crime in some of these cities is high and all that, but on the cultural aspect, I've really, really enjoyed the diversity of Michigan and um, I I've loved it. So I'm really happy to be here right now. This is the nicest bus stop I've ever seen. And I woke seen. up today and I really felt alive, excited to see this town, you know? Really happy to be here, couldn't be happier. And a lot of times, I've, I've, I've gotten to the point where I've kind of figured out how to get across cities better. Um, so you guys can get a, a wider scope of the city. Um, I had somebody mention that I'm going through the streets that all look the same, you know, where it's the main streets of the cities. But as I do these tours, it's how I really get a feel for the city, to be honest. Um, I used to do a lot of like old historical neighborhoods, but which is beautiful to me, but if it doesn't get views, it's pointless. People like the hoods, people like the streets and stuff, so. That's really what I got to go for. But, yeah, this is how you really see a city, I think. Unfortunately, not everybody's going to like my new program. Um, you guys would have loved to see my hood videos where I just did nothing but the worst hoods. And every clip that you saw was absolute desolation. You know what I mean? Like, every clip used to be, like, concentrated hood stuff. I can do that back in Florida because that, that's edited videos. Bro, I'm on a cross-country road trip. I do not have time to do that. I gotta, like, see the town, know what it's about, and then move to the next town. It's pretty much impossible on a cross-country road trip to be able to, um, to do that. I would have to be editing videos. Like, where do I even have time to edit videos? It's, like, impossible. Like, I've been wanting to live stream that I had time because when we're, when we're not recording or driving to a place in the middle of nowhere... It's been crazy doing this road trip, by the way. <coughs> Already, I'm caught off guard. That I expected everything to be new and fancy, and this is kind of like hood looking. It looks more rundown and hood than what I thought it would be. These back streets look real neat right around here, though. Like everything we've seen in Michigan so far, like I, I in my mind, I'm thinking brand new. This kind of looks like Albany, Georgia, or Columbus, Georgia. It looks kind of like air. Eh. Like that, you know, like, ugh. like for real though. Because mm -hmm. everything we've seen since we left Detroit until we got here, like quite literally, every time we drove through, new stores, new restaurants, new hotels, new warehouses, like the whole drive through Michigan, Southern Michigan looks like there's really good economical activity. I mean, in Arbor, like, everything we drove through looked like absolutely popping off. Like, really, um, like, it's really grow growing in a positive way. Like, new investments, new buildings, like, everything on the way here was incredible. Like, you could tell it's a good economical region just driving through here. Now, we'll say this. Um, the population of this town has been stagnant since the 20s, 30s. Growth has been slow or stagnant since like the 20s, 30s, 40s. This town hasn't grown all that fast. Only in the last 10 years has this town seen a little uptick, about 8% population change, 
over the decade period, which means that the town could be on the come up, which means it would be a good time to get in. And a lot of people are getting in, but when I drive around this town, there's a long way to go because these districts that are run down like this, um, I'm not saying this is in horrible shape. Why is the grass that already? Has it already gotten that cold here? Has it already gotten that cold here, baby? Maybe at night. Yeah, it's already getting cold at night. Okay. But, like, it's hard for a district when it looks like this to switch up. I mean, it happens in Nashville. It's happened in Miami. It's happened in a few places, but it's hard. Like, really, really hard. I love what these neighborhoods look like, especially on that side of the road. Let's take a drive through one residential like, street. 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 Bro, I'm going to take a high time. Porque me caes mal, me estás molestando, bro. Tú me quedas contento, estoy disfrutando la vida, y tú te me estás molestando, bro. Tú no ves que tú caes mal, tú no ves que yo soy un tipo peligroso, tú, 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 no, tú no me respetas. <coughs> I love these neighborhoods. Yeah. I always loved the style of houses up here. This is just incredible. I love the style of these neighborhoods. Who's Spanish or black? I can't tell. Truck, ooh, a truck, that poor truck is rotten to crap, bro. Oh, I love these neighborhoods. Look at these houses right here, man. See that right there? I love that. Like, they're yeah. all lined up perfectly. What are house prices in this town like? This is like the Fort Myers of the north right here. L&M. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, it look better going this way. But look at this house right here. Love that style of house. Love it. Can't get enough of these neighborhoods. Which 120s and up. Oh, wow. We shouldn't have spent all our money on cars and road trips. We could have bought a house here. But how would we have known we had liked it unless we had road trips up here? Yep. Aha! There you go. That right there is a tough spot. Yeah. How do you know what you want? That right there is a question. You have the money, but what do you do with it? Tough question. But if you find out what you do with it, you might not end up having it. Life is a conundrum. And that's why Jose is here. Let me tell you. Subscribe to our channel. Share our channel. Share it with your friends. Like, hey, I know you're moving. or planning on moving. Check this guy out, man. Like, help me help you. Because right now... What we're doing, it's not just like, it, it's beyond helping myself. It's to the point where I recognize that the work that I'm doing, Que vuelta a ser, que te medio, bro! The work that I'm doing affects people all over, like in, in so many positive ways, you know? So it, it, it goes beyond just us. It's like, oh, by the way, this is not Grand Rapids. A lot of that was Wyoming, but whatever. We're in Grand Rapids, metropolitan area. Now we're entering... Um, like the city core or whatever. By the way, we're looking out for a street. I don't know if we've passed it yet. There's a street. Oh, it's, it's, we're still not even in the city. There's a street we got to go on. So we're just now entering. Eight minutes into this, we don't enter the city. That was like Wyoming. I'm pretty sure that was Wyoming. Yep, Wyoming. So we're just now entering... Um, Buen Rapido. El Gran Rapido de Michigan. You said in, in uh, Wyoming there's a lot of Cubans? Yeah. How do you find that out? Statistics. A Cuban man. I could go for real Cuban bread right now. Did any of these Cuban restaurants actually have real Cuban bread? Uh, didn't really see anything. Usted no sabe nada, bro. You know, find out for me, bro. I'm just disappointed that it's a rundown city. I, I, in my mind, I, I saw these buildings all brand new. Like on the way here, everything was so brand new and fancy. Yeah. Like in my mind, I saw like a fancy brand new place. This is kind of like a rundown. This is kind of like a like an Albany, Georgia looking type of place. Columbus, Georgia. Like in my mind, okay, maybe it gets better. Well, the bus stops are fancy, but they get snow and stuff. They gotta be fancy. Mm -hmm. They can't have people dying in their bus stops, freezing to death.
I still like it, but it is very run down and hood looking. You know what it reminds me of? Mm -hmm. Rome, Georgia. Mm -hmm. It's just like a Rome, Georgia of the north. <clears throat> they call them sidewalks and stuff, for real? I thought it would be fancier. Like, I thought it would be like everything we saw was so nice, and I was hoping this would be nice. And then I get here, and it looks kind of like run down and hood. Which is fine with my standard, believe me, I like that, but it's not what I thought I was getting. So this is the heart of the Hispanic area here. You can tell by the time there's people walking around on bicycles and stuff. There's no other way to simplify that. I really think that um, that the Mexican neighborhood in, in Detroit was really nice, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably the coolest Hispanic neighborhood I've ever seen in any town anywhere. Let's roll back in here and see like the back streets of this Hispanic neighborhood. It's supposed to be 70% Hispanic back here. You can tell by the fact there's a La Vendedora right there. Oh, I love this neighborhood. Look at these houses, baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, they're changing the roof on that one. I've always wondered. Oh, they did a roof over at some point. Now the whole thing's garbage. Those roof overs are trash. Never do a roof over. If you're going to replace a roof, get rid of the old roof. Because eventually down the road, especially if it's a nice neighborhood, eventually down the road, somebody's going to want to do it again. Car coming out, man. Gotta get out of the road. Amigo. Alright, the Spanish people here, all of, you don't notice that all the young people here, the Spanish look really gangster? Mm hmm. All the Spanish people here, the Spanish kids here, all the young people look gangster. Mm -hmm. It's got like a gangster vibe to it. Mm -hmm. Like they're all mean mugging you and they got like an afro or something. Mm -hmm. It looks like all the young people that are Spanish here are really like, like it out. Mm -hmm. That's never good. Mm -hmm. It's got like a, like a, like a hood vibe to it. Mm -hmm. It's really a Spanish hood. You know, so both of the young kids we passed were like me mugging. Mm -hmm. Patrolling or whatever. Yo. Mm -hmm. Bucanum Avenue. Okay. Ya tu sabes que lo que? Oh, but that's like a town. I love how it's already cool up here. It's a great time to be up here as far as weather. Love the houses here, really pretty. It's hood, but it's nice. It's like a nice type of hood. It's a it's a front porch type of hood. I like it. If you're Spanish and you like the hood, this might be for you. A nice hood. A cold. A freezing cold nice hood. With rotting cars. That's the one thing about the snow. You look at people's cars, they're all beat up, man. Like, man, I couldn't imagine. Like, I guess you just can't have a nice car if you live up here. It'd be pointless. Oh, look at that Yukon with the headlights. It's nice. I always talking about getting those headlights so are you going to forget them? Keep it or not. See the road? I was just just waiting. There she goes. Why is she scared? Like, you shouldn't be scared. Across the road, it's okay. Yeah, baby, we'll respect you. I even gave her extra space. Mm -hmm. She's not taking any chances with her baby. Nope. She's 
I'm firm by the hand. That's how a mother should be protecting her baby. Saludos a toda mi gente de Guatemala, gente trabajadora, gente buena. La gente más trabajadora, de todos los hispanos los más trabajadores, la gente de Guatemala, bueno, saludos, los quiero. You know, out of all the Spanish people, Guatemalans are the hardest working. Yeah. It's all they, they don't care about politics, they don't care about, and all they care about is working and t so their families can have the things they need. That's the only thing they care about. They don't care about politics, they don't care about anything. All they care about is working so they can feed their families. Hardest working people on the face of this planet. If I was the president, I'd 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 I'd, I'd, I'd give a million of those people their, their documents. Mm -hmm. the, the United States needs people like that. Yeah. It's a Guatemalan flag right there. If I was a U.S. president, I would give a million of these people their U.S. citizenship, or I really would. And I'd give it to the ones that already came here and been here and worked here before, because they already risked their lives to get here. Brought the, somehow managed to bring their family across a bunch of countries to get over here on foot half the time. Mexican and Guatemalan flag. I want that to be the cover photo. Burritos and gorditos. How do I get back on the street though? It's a good cover photo if I can get near it. If I could, I guess if I really wanted to, I could. This car is like, if I slow down, if you slow down. That's what warehouse this. So now we're closer to, where, what's the reset? We're supposed to take another street going that way. I think Wolfie is the street we're looking for now. That's what we're looking for now. Wolfie. That's the Spanish district right there. And yeah, man, these people work hard, bro. Like if I if I was like in charge, this I'd be like, give me a million of those. I, I'd, I'd order a million of them. I'd order a million of them, bro. Tienda el que está. This is also Guatemalan. You see the flag right there. Oh, so they have like their a little neighborhood here. You could go on my neighborhood. But the, for real, out of all the Spanish people, don't nobody work hard in Guatemala. Some people just work. And they don't bother anybody. They don't get anybody's business. And they're not Republican. They're not Democrat. All they are is workers. I'd order me a million Guatemalans, 500,000 Andorenos, too. And say, let's start building some houses. We need houses in America right now. Housing is too expensive. We need housing. People need a place to live. And they build twice as many houses as you need in half the time you thought they could. You know what I'm saying, like, they don't really care about, like, they know what they're, they're talking about. They're on the TV talking about. We want to control inflation. Housing is too expensive. They don't. They know how to fix that problem. They know how to fix that. They don't want to fix it because that's part of their plan. They know what they're doing. Getting people in debt every day more. Everybody's in debt. All the crap do you live in some of these places, bro? Looking for Wolfie Street. Is that it right there? Franklin. Looking for Wolfie Street. They didn't know what's going on. They didn't know why they're doing it. It's, 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 it's like... It's all one economical um, domination. Like They know what they're doing. They, they know what they're doing. Because there are solutions to the problems we have right now. Some of these places, how are you even supposed to live? You get paid $12 an hour. You got to come up with a $2,000 rent. And then you got places in Alabama where people are complaining about... Man, I can't. I need to get paid sixteen dollars an hour. For what? You pay five hundred dollar rent. Well, you need fifteen dollars an hour. People in California need to make fifteen dollars an hour. People in Florida need to make that. You know, in Alabama talking about I want to make fifteen dollars an hour. Bro, literally, I've been to places in Alabama that was frustrating. They open at nine. They open at ten a.m. They don't open at eight or nine. They open at ten. So if you go in there at twelve fifteen, at uh, ten fifteen, man, we just opened up fifteen minutes ago. We're just getting set up. Got to come in by about eleven. You get there at eleven. Like, oh no, at twelve they take a lunch break from twelve to one. So they close down the store by the way from twelve. Everything in Alabama for the most part, some of these places in Alabama, from twelve to one, everybody's on lunch break. If you show up at one fifteen, we just got back from our lunch break. 
and they close at four. They don't close at five or six, they close at four. So if you go to 3.30, well, we're about to close in 13, 30 minutes. You might as well just come back tomorrow. We're getting ready to close down. They take 30 minutes to close down before they close down. By uh, the end of the day, you pay these people eight hours to work and they work, I don't know, two. It's like this endless bureaucracy of some people in some places where they have it easy and they still want to politic for more. Like they don't realize we're what coming time. up right here. Wealthy Street? Yep. Yeah. Well, it's pretty heading that way though. It's like some people got it easy and they still complain like they don't have it easy and they don't know how easy they got it. They don't know what it's like to live in Newark, New Jersey and be stuck on that freaking highway for two hours each way each day. They don't know what it's like to enter to, to the house. Let's say you have to work in New York City and have to pay a $16 toll every day. You know? It's just interesting how some people in some parts of the country, they got it real easy. Like, there's places that are rigged up real easy to live. Like, Alabama, super easy to live. And there's on top of that, they're still politicking for more. They're not done yet. They want more. And then you got other places where people really got to grind out here, for real. Like, they really got to hustle. They really got to figure it out. And they figure it out. They make it happen. Like, me, with my Florida, with my Florida mindset, or you with your New Jersey mindset... If you went to Alabama, you'd have to get rich. Because you you know every trick in the book to make it happen. But then people there, they're, they're sleeping on life. You know, they haven't figured out what time it is. And eventually, it's going to catch up with them. Like, it's not going to stay like that forever. When I bought a house for 65000 in Alabama, and a, a, one year and two days later, I got more than twice what I paid for it. More than twice what I paid for. It. You hear me? More than twice. I mean, my house appreciated over fifty percent in less than a year. No, over a hundred percent. Yeah, a hundred and ten percent appreciation in a one-year period. Just by me getting there, making some videos about the place. Bring in like five people more than what they had before. And the place went up that much. Because I knew what time it was. I knew that place was like on the edge of... Like that place was on the edge of... It had to change. You know what I mean? I can't believe how many flags they have up here. Are that many people really like that here? Or is that just support? I don't, I'm not even sure. The north seems to have a lot of that, I guess. That one has a two right there. This one does too. Like really, every every last one of these people. This one does too. No, they can't all be like that. They, it must just be support or something. Yeah. That one does too, and that one does too. They all have it. Wow. Okay. Here too. Okay. Why is that, how is that even possible? Like. Just really. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. Well, a lot. Are we in the projects or school? Either way, it's dangerous. <laughs> These are apartments. Yeah. I hope they're apartments. I don't know who's looking down there. Hmm. It's like knowing people are more tolerant than southern people. Yeah. But even Prattville, like in downtown Prattville, they put that flag in downtown Prattville. Mm -hmm. There's a in, in Prattville, Alabama, right in downtown, the main building and the main intersection of town in downtown, they put a a, a mural with a, with a flag, and the people were not happy. But it's obvious when you're there. When we moved to Alabama, it's, like, it's obvious. There's a lot of people here that are like that. And, and then, I don't know, Alabama is just a messed up place. But they don't realize how easy, like, that's the one thing I didn't learn in Alabama is, like, bro, like, what are these people complaining about? They have, like, the easiest, most, um, surf show. That one is actually just like ours, right there. Surf shows like ours. They have the easiest, easiest economical system in the country. 
You pay five hundred dollars rent. You get paid fairly all right. And Better than Florida, in my opinion. If you want a three-two house, it's only eight hundred. Yeah. You pay like eight hundred dollars rent. You make more money than you do in a lot of other places. And nothing is expected from you at work. Like, literally nothing. Like, when I would go work for people, like, they would load the stuff for me. I'm saying, like, you know you're paying me to do that, right? Like, I got paid. Like, they don't even, like, like, when I was doing my trash out, so people would start loading stuff. I'm like, you're paying me to do it. Like, well, you know, I don't expect you to work. I'm like, what do you mean you don't expect me to work? You're paying me to work. What What do you mean you don't expect me to work? Like, literally, that's how it is. I'm like, you'd show up. And they start loading the stuff for you. I'm like, you you called me out here to do this. Like, well, we don't expect you to work. My, that that would be a tragedy. <laughs> it's like for real, you're paying me. It's like they got the easiest economical system in the country. There's nowhere easier than Alabama to make it. There really isn't. Now, can you tolerate their politicking? And well, this city's gorgeous. Look at these houses. Can you tolerate their politicking and for how long? Like, remember when we went to Macon, Georgia? Yeah. This looks a lot like Macon, Georgia. Mm -hmm. But I bet you the crime rates here are probably like a fraction. It looks a lot like Macon, Georgia. And, and then like, mm -hmm. the nicer parts are, are not run down. But when you see those houses in Macon, Georgia, like, man, so much potential. It's just all run down. This reminds me a lot of Georgia. Making bacon. Making bacon. So are we gonna have lunch here or breakfast here? Or do you wanna go meet your friend? Go meet my friend. Okay. So start driving north? Yeah. GPS the address. I saw what I wanted. I'm sure there's a hood here, but I didn't get to see all of it. I saw one of the hoods. Head west on Fulton Street East toward Ransom Avenue Northeast. Then 800 feet, turn right onto Division Avenue North. I really don't like places that are leaning so far in one direction. Like Alabama's too far in one direction, and this is too far in the other direction. I like places kind of like right down the middle. Turn right onto Division matter. Avenue North. You know, like where it doesn't really matter as much. All right. I don't like places where like whatever people believe in is being shoved down your throat. This route avoids road closures well, really on is. Market Avenue Southwest. You are on the fastest route. You will arrive at 12:28 p.m. Dude, that Pontiac Grand Am was balling. Whatever their belief is, I don't like places where it's being shoved down your throat. That's right. I really don't. I, don't, I, I never like places where people are like, whether it's Alabama where it's too far in one direction or here where it's too far in the other. I just don't like it. Tweety, tweety, twatty, 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 tweak. Tweety, 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 tweak. Tweety, 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 tweak. Tweety, 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 tweak. Tweety, 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 tweak. Tweety, 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 tweak. Continue on Division Avenue North for half a mile. ¿Qué es eso? Ese edificio está feo. Oh, pero ese edificio está feo. Ese edificio parece que se va a caer. It's interesting to just discover these places. Like, I had no idea this place was like this. I thought it was more like... Like hood, though. Like hood, but it's not. It's got a whole different type of vibe to it. It's kind of 
like a better, colder version of Lou. In 1,000 feet, turn left onto the ramp to I-196 West. Michigan Street. All right. Well, I like the Guatemala neighborhood. Turn left onto the ramp to I-196 West, yeah, then merge onto I-196 West. Nice little area down there. That's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Do they have Cuban restaurants here? Uh-huh. Like three or four, but they're not real Cuban restaurants, are they? Uh, uh one... I know, but it wasn't like the stuff that you would want. It was kind of like Cuban America. Yeah. So it wasn't authentic. Merge onto I-196 West, then take exit 77A. Cadillac. Cadillac on 22s with a blonde hair gasket. Wait, look at this. The water. Take exit 77A. Look at people are playing in it. Hanging out. No, they're just swimming. Cadillac on 22. Swimming, fishing, hanging out. Hey, Continue on US 131 North for three miles. Gotta know that it's wrong. Cadillac is blown. Hey, gasket strong. And now I can't be gone. Cadillac on 22. With a blown hey, gasket. And get a good mechanic. Hey. He don't know what to do. He told me to call the junkyard dude and have it hauled off to a scrapyard. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Cadillac on 22s with a blown head gasket. Somebody really needs to come and junk it. Hey, hey, hey. The leather still look fresh, the paint still look clean, but with a blown head gasket. What do I mean? We took it to the scrap yard. This ain't a little clean. But they gonna crush it up. They send it to the shiner. It's a Cadillac on 22. A little head gasket. I'm gonna see my hometown today. Other than the cold weather, I'd give this town a 9 out of 10 or something, or 8 out of 10 or something. Maybe 7 out of 10. It's not bad. But, uh, cold weather, though, ooh, that's something else.